but I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. See, and here is what the problem is. Most church folks are used to the gospel that is preached by man. And see, here's the problem. Seminary can only teach you the events of the gospel. It cannot teach you the revelation of it. It takes the Holy Ghost to do that. Bible school, Bible training cannot teach you the revelation of the gospel. It can only teach you the events. You have to have the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm going to deal with this more on Sunday. Touch your neighbor and say, you need to be there. Just tell them that. Said, but I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. Watch this. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it. But it came to me by revelation, but, but through the revelation or through the apocalypse or through the uncovering of Jesus and his anointing by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is the one assigned to do that. Are you still here? So I want you to, I want you to understand this. Every time you open your Bible and you read Ephesians, Galatians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, 1st, 2nd Thessalonians, every time you open your Bible and you read that, you are reading from a man who wasn't taught. But you stand on it, you act on it, why? Because it is revelation of the Spirit. Wave at me if you understand. And so what I'm going to share with you is revelation knowledge. Now, again, revelation knowledge, disclosure visions of the Spirit are to be completely discarded if they do not line up with the Word of God, if they are not based on the Word of God, or if they do not lead you further into the truth of the Word of God. A revelation of the Spirit of God will never contradict the written Word of God. It will further expose and reveal the Word of God. Wave at me if you understand what I just said. So I don't care who he is, where they come from, if they descend through the roof on a cloud and they tell you they got something from God that doesn't line up with Scripture or that doesn't take you further into the revelation of Scripture, you are authorized by the Holy Ghost to reject it. But if, nudge your neighbor, say if, yes. if it takes you further into understanding of what the scriptures themselves teach, then you are to receive it and to walk in it. Yes. So watch this. Watch this. So what I'm getting ready to share with you, go back now to 1 Corinthians 11. What I'm getting ready to share with you uh, over the next 35, 45 minutes or so, was revealed to me by the Spirit of God and the reason that it's important that you understand it is because of the empowerment of it. And I, I, I say often part of it is a testimony. I was, uh, I was being afflicted in my body. Uh, this was around, it was in 2011. And I was being afflicted in my body with a throat condition. My throat hurt and ached for six months straight without, uh, without ceasing. It was constantly in pain. Every time I swallowed, it was extremely painful. Now, nobody knew it. I preached through it. I traveled through it. Uh, the only people who knew it were those who were closest to me, my family and that. But literally, I would preach 
The anointing of God would come on me. I would be fine. And after that, my throat would be so painful that even to swallow would hurt. I would lay in my bed and weep because I could not sleep because of the pain. I was taking lozenges every single night to the point that literally uh, I had to have dental assistance because of the sugar in the lozenges that was affecting me. I did this for six months without ceasing pain. I was ministering to people. People were getting healed, set free, delivered, saved, all kinds of things, and I'm in tremendous pain. I'm standing on the Word of God. I'm doing everything I know to do, and the Spirit of God says to me, I need you to come to me. I said, Lord, I am your son. I'm your boy. I've been doing this since I was 15. You called me. You anointed me. I've never done anything else. I have served you without ceasing to the best of my ability. And see, here's the thing. When you've done all you know to do, then there's probably something you don't know. <laughs> We say, well, I've done all I know to do. Well, that tells me there's something you don't know. And the Holy Spirit is the one who can lead you to it. So I went to the Lord. I said, God, I, I need you to help me because I'm ministering, to he I'm ministering healing. I went to doctors. I went to ear, nose, and throat specialists. I went to the best guys in Beverly Hills. They stuck or, you know, tubes down my throat, looked, saw what it, if there was anything there, no nodules, no cancer, no anything that. But still the thing didn't cease. I had one doctor who said to me, well, it's uh, acid reflux, and you're going to have to take this medicine for the rest of your life. It does not, it, it, there's no healing for it. You're going to have to take this. And when he said that, I, you know, I've been going, when he said that, something rose up in me and said, uh-uh, oh, the devil is a liar. There is no such thing as an incurable disease. The Bible says Jesus healed all manner of sickness and all manner of disease and if he is a healer then he heals everything so there is no such thing as an incurable disease and when he said that I went to the Lord I said Lord I said something has to happen here and the spirit of the Lord said to me he said here's what I want you to do I was in prayer he said to me, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take communion with me every morning for the next 14 days. Now, the Holy Spirit said that to me. I didn't find that in a book. See, this is why you have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit because he knows all things. And I'd probably be somewhere wasting away right now if I didn't have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. And, and, and the Lord said to me, he said, I want you to take communion. Here is, I'm instructing you. He said, I want you to take communion with me every morning for the next 14 days. He said, from the time you get up, until 11 a.m., you are not to talk to anybody. You are not to speak to anybody. You're not to text, receive a text, send an email. Don't look at anything. From the time you rise until 11 a.m. every morning for the next 14 days, you are with me. And I want you to take communion with me every morning for 14 days. I told everybody, told my staff, told my family, told my household, told lady. I said, okay, nobody's to bother me from the time, from the time I get up until 11. Don't, don't call me. Don't talk to me. I'm going to be in my office, and I need communion prepared every single day, and I'm going to take communion with the Lord. And I would pray. I would get in the Word. And on the 14th day, <coughs> it, was, it was the 30th of November 2011 on the 14th day of me taking communion right at about 11 a.m. the power of God and the glory of God filled my room I was literally knocked to the ground and when I looked up I saw the Lord Jesus Christ himself walking into my office 
holding his own body. I saw Jesus holding his own body and walking toward me like this. And he came to me carrying his body and he said, this is my body for you. And he reached his body out to me for me to grab it. When I reached for the body, I, I when I reached out for the body to take it, I reached out for it and he vanished. And then immediately over my right shoulder, it was like the ceiling opened up and I saw into the heavens. Immediately over my right shoulder, God bear me witness in the Holy Ghost, I saw the glorified body of Jesus at the right hand of the Father. I did not see his face. It was covered in, in, in glory. There was white lightning and clouds and, and he was draped and the bottom of his torso uh, from his waist down was covered in glory and light but his chest and, and his body was completely restored. I mean Jesus had pecs and abs and biceps. It was, it, it, it was a pristine body. It was flawless and it was emanating glory hallelujah and the word of the Lord came to me and he said to me I give you this body whole to steward it healed no I'm gonna say it again he said I give you I give you this body whole to steward it healed and the vision was over. And immediately, the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me in the Word. The vision was intellectually jamming to me because I saw a living Jesus carrying the body of a dead Jesus. Same Jesus different bodies look at your neighbor say one Jesus no, no look at your other neighbor say there are not two Jesuses look at your the one you were talking to at first and say it again say one Jesus but to go like this go but two bodies and when and when I saw that 1 Corinthians 15 started coming up in me. We're going to go to it in just a moment. But I got to read to you. I got to read to you a few scriptures before I get to 1 Corinthians 15. But look at your neighbor one more time and say, one Jesus, two bodies. And let me testify. That very day after I took communion, the sickness, the disease, the throat issue left that very moment no healing crusade nobody praying for me nobody anointing me with oil me and the word and the Holy Ghost and the communion table and the sickness left and it has never not ever come back again and it will never have me again because now I know something And that's when the Spirit of God said to me, he said, son, this communion table is not an ordinance table. It's not a, it's not a sacrament table. He said, it is a healing table. He said to me, it is my operating table. I operate here. Did you hear what I just said? Look at your neighbor and say, it's an operating table. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 11. Oh. 1 Corinthians 11, verse number 23. Paul is writing, and he says, For I received 
from the Lord. Everybody say, I received. Now again, when he says that, he's saying, I got this by revelation. I just read to you, Paul said, the gospel I got, I got it by revelation. I wasn't taught it. And remember, Paul is the apostle who never saw Jesus in the flesh. He was not one of the original 12. Are you still here? He never was a follower of Jesus during his earthly ministry. Paul receives everything he receives by revelation of the Spirit of God. It is he in Acts chapter 9 who is knocked off his beast on the road to Damascus and the Bible says, I heard a voice but, but, but saw no man. Are you still here? And that's when the, the Lord spoke to him and said, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? So he says, I, I received from the Lord that which also I delivered to you. Now he's talking to the Corinthian church. So he had preached this to them already. So he's reminding them, I already preached this to you. For I've received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night, everybody say the same night. Same night. This is important. Say the same night. same night. That the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And i got to stop there because that word broken, you see that word broken? That word broken is not in the original text. It's not in the original Greek text. If you've got a King James Bible or a New King James Bible, that word is italicized. And anytime you see an italicized word in the King James Bible or the New King James Bible, it lets you know that that word is not in the original text. The original text of the Old Covenant is delivered to us in Hebrew. The original text of the New Covenant is delivered to us in Greek. Are you still here? And the translators sometimes, because the Greek language and the Hebrew language are more colorful than the English language, sometimes the translators would throw in a word in order to try to help clarify or expand the phrase in English. But the word broken is not in the original text. It is italicized here. And if you read the original text in Greek, it's not there. Now, why is that important? It is important because Jesus didn't say broken. Amen. And when I saw this vision, I'm just telling you, when I, saw, when I had this visitation, the Lord said, this is my body for you and he was giving it to me watch this now, now, why is that important because when something is given to you in order to benefit from it you must receive it see a, a broken body is something you can watch a given body is something you have to receive and this is a part of the reason why our communion doesn't produce results because we watch it instead of receive it. Stay with me. Now I'm, I'm going to show you this. You don't have to take my word for it. I'm going to show it to you. Watch this. This is my body which is for you. The word broken is not in the original text. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner. Somebody say in the same manner. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Pay attention. This cup is the new. This cup is the new. This cup is the new. Notice, with the bread, he does not speak at all about anything new. He said, Just do this in remembrance of me. But when he takes the cup, he says, This cup is the new. Do you see it? Do you see it? This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Now, watch this. If they were both about the new, he would have said, this bread is a part of the new. But he doesn't say that. Now, why is that important? We're going to see it in just a moment. Because in one portion of the meal, you are dealing with the old. And in the 
other portion of the meal you are receiving of the new. And you got to know which one you're dealing with. Watch it. Watch it. This, in the same manner, he also took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Pay attention. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim. Somebody say proclaim. proclaim. Say it again, proclaim. proclaim. The Greek word here is katalagelo. It literally means to show, speak, or proclaim. In other words, Jesus says, when you do this with understanding, there is a proclamation being made. In the heavens and in the earth. Oh, I wish I had time to deal with this. <laughs> Don't have time. Don't have time. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. And here's what I'm going to say to you. See, when you do this with understanding, there is something that demons hear and angels go to work on. Paul, well, the Hebrew writer, when he talks about the Passover being instituted in Moses, he said when they ate and drank on the Passover Eve, he says they all ate the same spiritual food and they all drank the same spiritual drink. Amen. So there's something spiritual happening. Stay with me. Watch this. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. He said, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup in an unworthy manner. He, doesn't, he didn't say Whoever is unworthy when they drink it. I need you to see. And because religion has misunderstood this, we actually withhold communion from people who, if we understood what we were doing, the communion itself would break them through. He didn't say whoever is unworthy when they do it. He said whoever does it in an unworthy manner. What does that mean? Whoever doesn't know who they are when they do this. Whoever doesn't understand what this has made them. when they do it, are you still in the room, will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Now this, again, this in English, it just, this will be guilty. The Greek word here is enokos. It means liable to a condition or a penalty. In other words, he says, if you do this, not knowing who you are when you do it, you will remain liable to the penalty or the situation that you should have been delivered from when you do it. No, you missed what I just said. It means to remain liable. Uh, in other words, he's saying, if you don't know what has been done for you when you eat and drink this, you will remain in the same condition when you actually ha should have been delivered, healed, strengthened, Watch, watch, whoever drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will, again, the word is enikos, will remain liable to the condition or liable to the penalty. So he's saying if you eat or drink this without revelation, knowledge, and understanding that this sacrifice of his body and his blood, by this he has made you worthy. See, if you do not understand that by this you have been made worthy, you could remain subject to penalties and the very conditions that you have been delivered from by this very sacrifice. 
Are you still here? But let a man, would you look at the Bible? Because <laughs> this is why, this is why, it's amazing what you will not stand for in religion when you actually read the Bible. He, he said, but let a man examine himself. He didn't say you were supposed to examine me. He didn't say you were supposed to determine whether I could eat or drink. He said, let a man examine himself. In other words, I need to adjust my, if I need to make any adjustments, that's why I, that's why I never do this without going to the Word. Because the word makes the adjustments. It puts me in the right. I got to hurry. Watch this. But let a man examine himself. So let him uh, let a man examine himself. And once a man has examined himself, let him eat. Let him drink. Watch this. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner. There it is again eats and drinks judgment, de certain determinations to himself. Watch this. Not discerning the Lord's body. So, so, so that's the examination. Did you hear what I just said? That's the examination. He says before you do this, make sure you are mindful and reminded of which body you're dealing with. Did they get that? Yes, sir. He said, so he said, never do this just casually. Never do it in a hurry. Make sure that every time you do this, you focus on which body you're dealing with. I'm going to show you what that means in just a moment, but I got to hurry. Are you still here? Yes. No, no, look, look at the result. He said, for he who, 29, for he who drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment or certain conclusions or determinations to himself, not discerning the Lord's body, watch this, for this reason, for this reason, for what reason? For a lack of discernment of which body you are dealing with when you eat this bread and, are y'all looking at your Bibles? He said, for this reason, for what reason? He just said, he said, but let a man examine himself, so let him eat the bread. For he who eats and drinks in another other manner, eats and drinks, judges himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And for this reason, what reason? Not discerning the Lord's body. Many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Listen to what he said. He said, because you do not discern which body you are dealing with when you do this, Many of you remain weak when you should have been strengthened when you did this. Many of you remain sick when you should have been healed by doing this. And many of you die when your death sentence should have been canceled during communion. Light. No, you're not listening. The doctor's report should have been reversed while you took communion. Now, the Old Covenant symbolizes this in type and shadow because when the children of Israel took the Passover, the Bible says they came out with silver, rich. But first of all, they came out. Somebody say, that's salvation. That's a release from, they came out, that's a release, with silver and gold, somebody said, that's prosperity. And then it says, and there was not one feeble one among them. That's healing. So when they did what they did on Passover night, they got released, they got wealthy, and they got healed, and it's supposed to happen to you too. Because we have a better covenant based on better promises. Hold, squeeze your neighbor's hand and tell him something is supposed to be settled every time you do this. Something is supposed to loose you every time you do this. Something 
is supposed to be released to you every time you do this. Every time? Yes, every time. See, that's why he says, as often as you do it, because you don't have to wait for me. You don't have to wait till first Sunday. Yeah. Keba Roshanda Namaki. And when I read that, the Holy Spirit said to me, He said, Son, Every time you do this, I want you to make sure you discern these bodies and you minister this to my people because somebody's supposed to be healed, somebody's supposed to be strengthened, somebody's diagnosis is supposed to be reversed. You still here? Now, glory to God, go to Luke 22. Luke 22, I'm going to get done with this. I'm going to pray for you. We're going to receive communion, and we go into the house. Yes. Healed, yes. delivered, yes. ready to receive. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm not playing with this. I feel the Holy Ghost moving in my soul. Well, yeah, Luke 22. Go, 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 go. Luke 22. Luke 22. Luke 22. Let me read. Glory to God. Jesus. Whew. My God. So I want you to see. Here, here's what I want you to see. I want you to see that this institution of the Lord's table, the communion of the Lord's table, it happens at Passover. I don't have time to, to deal with the connection between Passover and that tonight. I've taught on that. You can go on YouTube and watch it. You, you know, it's, it's, out, it's out there. Or you can, you can I, I did one called Passover to Communion, the mystery revealed. It's on YouTube. You can watch it tonight. Or you can go to my download store, but why pay for it when you get it for free? Watch this. Watch. 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 Go to Luke 22. Go to Luke 22. <laughs> Verse number 7 is where I want to begin. I want you to see that this was Passover. Then the day of unleavened bread, when the, then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat. Now again, Passover was instituted, Exodus chapter 12, when the children of Israel come out of the bondage of Egypt. On that day, God tells Moses, the prophet, he says, this day shall be a beginning of... Of days for you it shall be the first day of a brand new year for you which is a type of the new creation it's a type of being born again today everything becomes new for you are you still here and he told them you're to take a lamb he says you take it on the tenth he said tell Moses tell all the congregation of Israel to take a lamb on the tenth and everybody's to take it on the tenth and then they're to slay it on the 14th this is in Exodus chapter 12 verses 1 through about 16. He says, tell them they're to take a lamb, a, a blemishless lamb, and they're to take it on the 10th, and they're to slay it on the 15th. They're to keep it. They're to hold it or observe it. Now, how many days is it between the 10th and the 14th? So you take it on the 10th. You slay it on the 14th. So how many days are there between the 10th and the 14th? Let's see, the 11th, the 12th, the 13th. In other words, you're to observe the lamb for three days. You, you, you're to pay attention to this lamb for three days because something is happening in the three days connected to the lamb. Does anybody see this? Then he tells them they're to slay it, and he says all the congregation is to slay it at the same time at twilight. He says, and then you're to take the blood and put the blood on the doorpost of the house. So you've got a slain lamb, a blemishless lamb, 
slain and you've got the blood being applied to your life and your house. Look at your neighbor and ask them, does that sound familiar to you at all? Are you still in the room? And then he says to them that they're to eat it. He says, he says, you're, he says you'll put the blood on the doorpost, but he said on the inside of the house, you're supposed to eat the flesh of the lamb. Now, who is the lamb? Jesus. Remember what Jesus said? He said, I am the living bread. He said, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life in you. What was he talking about? Cannibalism? No. He was talking about the type and shadow of Passover. He says, I am the lamb. And my flesh is the word. For in the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, John 1.1, 1, 1, and the Word was made, John 1.14, and dwelt among us. So eating the flesh of the Lamb is eating the Word of God while the blood is keeping death away. You have to eat the life on the inside to walk in what has been given to you. And see, this is why the benefits are not affecting more Christians because we're trusting in the blood, but we haven't eaten enough flesh. We don't have enough word about this to rebuke the enemy when he comes. The blood is working. You still in the room? Nudge your neighbor, say he's coming to a close shortly. <laughs> now go down to verse 14. It says, when the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Now look, now look at this. Look at this. Look, 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 look at the words. He says, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Notice this one. It, now, he's a Jewish boy. They're all Jewish men. They've been observing Passover all their lives. So Jesus is 33 years old. From the time of his consciousness, he has been alive during 32 previous Passovers. But are you still here? But when he comes to this one, because he knows this is the night he's going to begin to suffer. And this is the night all that stuff that the children of Israel has been doing for thousands of years is actually going to be manifest and come to fruition. He says, I have been waiting for this one. I've been waiting for this Passover. Why? Because this is the one where Passover becomes communion. This is the one that finishes one covenant and initiates another one. Are you still here? With fervent desire, desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. No, what? Look at what he says. He says, for I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He's not talking about the marriage supper of the Lamb. He's saying, I, I will not eat of this again until the shadow is fulfilled and the substance is manifest. That's going to happen in the next three days. So what he's saying, are y'all still here? He said, he's, I, I'm not, he said I, I, I won't eat of this until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. But once it is fulfilled in the kingdom, every time you eat it, I'm going to be eating it with you. See, you don't, you don't. Well, wait a minute. Is Christ in you? Then can you eat it and him not be present? Ah. Didn't he, didn't he say, wherever any two or three of you are, there am I. So when we do it together... He's eating with us. Why is that important? 
because that means he is present to activate everything you and I know is supposed to happen. But if we don't know it and we don't say it, he can't do it. You still in the room? Watch this. Let me, let, let me hurry because I can, I can see you leaving me ready to go eat. Watch. Watch, 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 watch. He says, with fervent desire, verse 15, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I said to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Watch this, children, watch. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Well, let me ask you, has it come? Uh, so then every time we do this, he is drinking with us. See, see, you should never do this without the consciousness that he is there. I'm going to say it again. You should never do this without the consciousness he's there. Communion, koinonia, fellowship, together. This is one of the ways you and I get together anytime, anywhere, as close as we can get. Watch this. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. So look, look at, look at your Bible. Look at the screen. And he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is... Notice, he didn't say broken. See, you don't have to take my word for it. Luke, who was a contemporary witness, says, Jesus said, given, not broken. So if Jesus said given and not broken, then the Holy Spirit wouldn't say broken to Paul. But why is that important? It's important because of what I saw. See, the revelation clarified the scripture. It confirmed the scripture. And if you know the scripture, I don't have time to go to it all, but let me write, let me put it down. Uh, Isaiah 34, 20, John 19, 31 through 36, tell us that not a bone in his body was broken. In John 19, when the other malefactors are already, expi are, are, are already expired, the Bible says that they came to break his legs, and when they came to break his legs, they saw he was already dead. So not a bone, Isaiah prophesied, not a bone in his body would be broken. And Jesus knew the word, so he wouldn't say, this is my body broken, when he knew it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> now you say, Bishop McClendon, you're making a big deal. No, 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 no. Because what I'm trying to point out to you is you, are, you, you must receive the body given to you. Are you still in the room? Watch this. He said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. The cup is the new covenant. The cup is the new covenant. The cup is the new covenant in his blood. It, it is not his blood. You're not drinking his blood. It doesn't change into blood. That is a religious error. He says it is the new covenant in my blood. So when you drink this drink spiritually, you are receiving every attribute, benefit, every, uh, every condition of the new covenant. You are, are, are agreeing with it again.
you still here. After somebody took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, my betrayer is with me on the table. Now, that's when, when I read that, when the Spirit of God showed that to me, that's when 1 Corinthians 15, verse 35, came up in my spirit and everything became clear. I saw, notice, with the bread he talks, he does not speak about the new covenant. With the bread he says, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. But with the cup, he says, this cup is the new. The cup is the new. Nothing mentioned about the new with the bread. The cup is the new. So when you and I come to this table, we are actually dealing and seeing the marriage of the two covenants. We are dealing with the fulfillment of one and the activation of the other. We are dealing with a work that is finished and a new covenant that is initiated. Go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 35. Remind your neighbor, say two bodies, one Jesus. Look at your other neighbor and say, and you have to discern which one you're dealing with. You have to discern the body of the Lord. You have to discern the body to get the benefit. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 35. This is where it became clear to me. The Apostle Paul is writing, the same apostle that all this other revelation knowledge came through. Notice, he says, but someone will say, how are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? With what body do they come? With what body do they come? Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive until it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow that body that shall be, but mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain, but God gives it a body as he pleases and to each seed its own body. Time out. Let's make sure we understand what he's saying. He's saying, listen, when you sow a seed, the seed you sow is not the same as what comes up. There is one body to what is sown and another body to what comes up. And it's God, not you, that determines which body it is. Look at this. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another of fish, and another of birds. Look at your neighbor and say, translation, there are different kinds of flesh. And just because you see flesh doesn't mean it's all the same. Let's read on. Verse number 40. There are celestial bodies that has to do with heaven, and terrestrial bodies that has to do with earth. But the glory, ah, 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 the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Now, he's not talking about planets there. He's talking about bodies. In the next verse, he deals with planets. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, Another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. Translation. You can be looking at two stars. They're both stars. But the glory in one is different than the glory in another. Just like that, you can be looking at two bodies. They may look the same to you, but the glory of one is different from the glory of the other. Verse number 42, so also is the resurrection from the dead. Now notice what Paul said. I said everything I said to you, not to talk to you about wheat, not to talk to you about suns and moons and stars. I said all I said to you to talk to you about the resurrection. I'm not a botanist. I'm not an agriculturist. I'm not an astronomer. 
I'm a preacher of the gospel and I'm called to preach Christ Jesus and I'm talking to you about the resurrection. Watch it. So also is the resurrection of the dead. Watch this. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written. The first Adam became a living being. The last Adam, Jesus, became a life-giving spirit. Oh! So it's sown one way, but it's raised another way. So just because it looks like the same Jesus doesn't mean it's the same Jesus. It differs in glory. And that's why the angels, y'all aren't listening to me, that's why the angels, when Jesus was taken up, he said, this same Jesus. Because this one is different than the one you were dealing with before the cross. The one you were dealing with before the cross couldn't walk through walls. The one you were dealing with before the cross could raise up on a cloud and leave. Look at your neighbor. Say one Jesus. Two bodies. So watch this. I saw the resurrected Jesus carrying the body of the crucified Jesus. According to the revelation of scripture, the crucified one took my sin in his own body on the tree that I being dead to sin might live unto righteousness by whose I am. The Bible says he that knew no sin was made to be sin for me that I might be made the righteous of God. Well, Peter tells me where that happened. It happened on the cross. Paul tells me in the book of Colossians that not only did his body become sin, but when that body was on that cross, that body also took the entire old covenant. It fulfilled the entire old covenant. The, no, you're not hearing me. Yeah. Oh, God, I got to show it to you. I just said something that I hadn't said before in this context. Are you still here? Ah, ah. Huh. Oh goodness. Uh, Colossians chapter one, verse. Uh, Colossians, I'm sorry. Colossians chapter two, verse uh, number thirteen. And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. So on that cross, his body becomes sin. His body becomes the fulfillment of, of the old covenant and it's nailed and taken out of the way so watch it when he dies and they take that body off the tree and they lay it in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb they are laying my sin in there they are laying the old covenant in there and taking it out of the way Paul tells us in Corinthians that also there was a grace exchange there of my poverty for his riches. 
So they're also taking all of my debts. Oh, you're not listening to me. All my lack. Not just my sin debt. My house debt. My car debt. You didn't know you could get your car paid off at communion, did you? Now you know. You didn't, you didn't know you could start settling your mortgage at communion and believe for a supernatural payoff. Watch it. Watch it. The book of Romans says that God sent forth his son in the likeness of sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. Well, what is sin in the flesh? Sickness. Sin when it's in the flesh, manifests as sickness. Now, I'm not talking about your sin. I'm talking about the fact that there is sin in the earth shows up in the body. And if you don't know it's illegal in your new creation body, you'll settle for it. Ah! Somebody say, one Jesus, two bodies. So I saw him come to me and say, this is my body for you. And I got it. I'm to receive my sins remitted. I'm to receive my body healed. Every time I take communion, I'm to receive my debts paid. I am to receive that I am no longer under the old covenant, but I am living in the new covenant by a new and living way. I am, when I, when I take the bread, I'm receiving the finish of everything old, everything unsettled, Everything that looks wrong, I am to receive it as finished by his finished work. I'm to receive it because when I take the bread, I'm dealing with that first body. So he says, don't do this without discerning which body you're dealing with. And I'm telling you as a son of God, whether you do it corporately or you do it privately, don't you ever take communion again without settling something at that table. It's not a ritual. It's not a sacrament. You're supposed to decree something done. I decree this sickness is over. I declare in the name of Jesus that this attack on my mind, this guilt, I, I lay it right here at this table in the name of Jesus and he's right there with you. You're to receive. And then he said, once you get done with that body, move over to the other one. Move over to the new. The resurrected one. He said, this cup is the new. This cup 
is the new. This cup is the new. This. So every time you drink that cup, and I'll never forget this. I was praying, and the Lord said to me, he said, son, and I saw the table of the Lord. And, I, I, and the Lord said to me, this is an operating table. I operate here. He said, just like a surgeon operates on a table, I am the great physician. I operate at this table. And I saw literally, as I prayed over this matter, I saw that table and I saw Jesus on one side of the table ministering the bread. But then when he got to the cup, he moved to the other side of the table and in front of it. And he said to me, he said, every time you do this, you're to move to the other side of the situation. You are battling something. He said, you get with me. You put that bread down, that cup down. You take it with me. And once you take that cup, you move to the other side of it. And you say, okay, now I'm expecting every good thing, every perfect thing, every because that's where things are settled. Are you still here? Now watch this. I'm done. Keep playing. I want to read the rest of this and then take you to one passage, which I'm not going to be able to expand on. Look back at 1 Corinthians 15, verse 46. It says, however, the spiritual is not first, but the natural. And afterward, the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Watch this. As the man was of dust, so are those who are made of dust. And as is the man, and as is the heavenly man, so also those who are heavenly. Oh. 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 So the moment you became a new creation, you became something other than the man of dust. No, you missed what I just said. He said, as was the man of the dust, verse 48, so are those who are made of the dust. And as is the heavenly man, so are those who are heavenly. Well, the Bible says you're a citizen of heaven and your name is registered there. Now watch this. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. And I saw it. See, when you and I discern what we're doing as we take communion, there is a download of the heavenly man coming into our spirits and into our nature. Are you still here? See, the Bible says, as he is. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Talk, talk to me. As he is. So are in. See, not, on, not when we get over in glory land. Here, we're supposed to be bearing more and more of the image of the. That's why when I saw that second vision, he said, I give you this body. Whole. To steward and heal. See, Jesus made. You and I hold at Calvary. We are not the sick trying to get healed. We are the healed. Stewarding our healing from an enemy that's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And you and I have to say, no! And communion is one of the ways that we do it. First Corinthians 10, and I'm done. I got eight seconds. Watch this now. Whew. Look at verse 11 of First Corinthians 10. Talking about the old covenant, beginning with the Passover and the Exodus is what is being talked about here if you read up further. He said, now all these things happened to them 
as examples and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Watch this. Therefore let him who thinks he stands pay attention lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make the way not a way the way not a way the way not a way the way and in the Greek it is the definite article the way of escape it is ek basis the word ek out and basis to walk in other words he's saying with everything that comes to you God has already made the way out what is the way out keep reading therefore my beloved flee from idolatry in other words flee from the images you've created for your own deliverance for I'm speaking to wise men, meaning people who have received the wisdom of God. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion? Are you still here? Everybody say the communion. The word is koinonia, the partnership, the participation, the intercourse, the benefaction, the distribution. In other words, the cup. Is it not how the benefits are distributed? Is it not how the blessing is received by you? Is it not how God distributes what Jesus has done? Are you there? Everybody say the cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood? See, the cup is how I commune with what the blood did. Uh, the cup is how I get the benefit of what the blood did. The cup is how I get the attribute of what the blood did. Are you still there? I said, are you still there? The bread which we break, is it not how we commune or get the benefit or the distribution of the resurrected body? Are you still here? So he just told you the communion is the way out. It's the way. It's the way out of everything. I'm going to try this side because y'all have left me. He said, it's the way out. I don't need to look for a new way every time I get in a situation. It's the same way. That's why he says flee idolatry. Stop trying to come up with your own way. Stop making your own image of how you're going to get delivered and bowing down to it. I've already given you the way. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Tell them God has made this thing simple. Come on, look at your brother, look at your sister, tell him God made it easy. No matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance, the way out is the same way. It's the body and the blood. It's the finished work of Jesus. Lay your hands upon yourself. Uh, I'm getting you ready for an exodus. Woo, you're about to come out of something and into something else. Better, brighter, newer. Hey, lay your hands on yourself. Are you still here? Are you watching me at home? Are you watching me? Lay your hands upon yourself. 
We're going to minister communion in just a moment. If you're watching me live streaming, go get bread and water. You can get cornbread and Kool-Aid. Because he said, the bread which we bless, the cup which we bless. And in just a moment, I'm going to bless it. And every attribute, every benefit of the finished work of Jesus is to flow to you. I'll never forget when I was first coming into the understanding of this revelation and the vision the Lord gave me, the visitation that he gave me. And as I was meditating in this some years ago, again, this revelation has been growing in me since 2011. It was a few years before the Lord would even let me teach it. He wouldn't let me teach it for three or four years. And then he told me I can only teach it when he directs me to. But he told me I'm assigned to do it every Good Friday until he tells me otherwise. One of the things he said to me is he said, son, he said, there, there's a doctrine called tr transubstantiation. Catholic Church teaches it that when the priest or the man of God blesses the elements, they turn into the body and the blood of the Lord. That's not so. That's a man-made doctrine. Nothing against my Catholic brothers and sisters, but it's not biblical. But the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, son, he said, your Catholic brothers almost got it right. He said, because it's not the bread and the cup that changes. It's the believer. No, you're not. The, the believer's substance changes. You and I take on more of the image of the resurrected man. I want you to understand this. Because before Jesus comes again, there are going to be a people on planet earth who are partaking of communion and they are bearing so much the image of the heavenly man that sickness won't be able to even get on them. Are you listening to me? There will be a people that are so walking in the image of the heavenly man that the things that affect natural men will not affect them. We've already seen some of this. Some people have heard of the man of God and he would take communion with regularity. John G. Lake, who went to Africa during the times of the bubonic plague and, they, and he was ministering healing to the sick and they actually took bubonic plague germs and put them in his hand and when they would put them in his hand, the plague would die in his hand under a microscope. See that early church? That's why you know you, you don't hear you don't hear about Peter, John. You don't hear about none of them getting sick. You, you, you don't you don't you don't hear about it. Why? Because the Bible said they continued in the apostles doctrine and breaking of bread that's communion they did this with regularity and because they understood the revelation of it they walked in a power that we look at and we wonder how did that happen this is one of the ways that's why the holy spirit is restoring it to the church. Lay your hands upon yourself. If you pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Spirit. If you're watching me live streaming, if you pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. If you pray in the understanding, pray in the understanding. We're about to minister communion. And I declare that this night brings an end to sickness and disease in bodies. Chronic diseases. Things doctors said would never leave you. I announce are leaving your body tonight. Leaving your family tonight. Leaving your circumstance and situation. Tonight. Somebody say tonight. 
Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. I declare in the name of Jesus. Spirits that have plagued you. Yokes and bondages that have attacked you. In the name of Jesus. They will be ejected from your atmosphere tonight. As you rightly discern the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I declare addictions will be broken. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Master. I declare debts will be canceled. Things will be supernaturally paid off. In the name of Jesus. Somebody pray in the Spirit with me. Chronic conditions in the digestion, in the breathing, in the throat. I decree in the name of Jesus. It stops tonight. Curses that seem to have followed your family. In the name of Jesus, I decree an end to that tonight. I need somebody to believe God with me. Woo. Court actions, unjust accusations. In the name of Jesus, I decree it finished tonight. Somebody pray in the spirit. I keep hearing Nahum 1 9. Somebody's had a sickness that keeps coming back, a disorder that keeps coming back. And I hear the Lord say, This affliction shall not rise up a second time. Tonight it is over. Tonight it is done. Tonight it is finished. In the name of Jesus. Woo. My God, I, I hear the Holy Ghost talking. Pray in the Spirit. Some of you, you've had attractions to certain kinds of bad relationships. I just heard this in the Spirit. Like you keep attracting the same kind of individual and the relationship is always bad. In the name of Jesus, I break that Spirit in Jesus' name now. Loose God's Son. Let His daughters go through. Yes, God. Uh -huh. Somebody lay your hand on yourself and say the cycle is broken. Say that. I just heard that. The cycle is broken. Say. The cycle is broken. In the name of Jesus. Lay your hands on yourself. Amo kama secha. Ayaya. Lay your hands. Ayaya. Lay your hands upon yourself. Father, Lord, you know that I have spoken what you have given to me. And what I have taught, like your servant Paul said, I neither got it from man, neither was I taught it. But it came to me by revelation of the Spirit. Lord, you know that I held it until you told me I could speak it. I submitted it to men of God, although I knew I had heard from you. 
I submitted it to fathers in the faith who had greater experience, longer experience in walking with you. And they confirmed that this was your word. And so I teach it boldly. And I know that you will confirm your word with signs following now. I pray now the revelation of the Spirit would stay with your sons and daughters and that Holy Spirit that you would lead them further into truth show them things that you haven't even shown me concerning their circumstance and situation that they might know that they know that they know that they know that the victory belongs to them and now I bless the bread and the cup for your word declares it is your wisdom for the new creation your word declares it is the way of escape your word declares that it is how we become benefactors it is how the distribution of what Jesus finished for us at Calvary is downloaded to us and I declare in the name of Jesus that every man woman boy and girl under the sound of my voice whether they hear this now or 10 years from now, I declare that there shall tonight in this moment be a download of the heavenly image. I decree in every life, circumstance, and situation, tonight something ends and something else good and perfect from heaven begins. I declare that men and women in physical, emotional, circumstantial, situational, financial dis distress, I declare tonight they move from one side of the table to the other, from one side of the situation to the other. And I decree a divine exodus and a supernatural entrance into a whole nother dimension of life in the kingdom of God for your people everywhere in the name of Jesus and the people said take the bread in your hand if you're watching me live stream, if you're here and you don't have it lift your hand somebody will get it to you right away I don't want anyone to miss this and if you're at home like I said get anything the Lord will honor it we just blessed it I want you to get it and I want you to receive I want you to discern with me which body we're dealing with and I want to help you and I want to encourage you because I do this there are times there are times in my prayer life there are times in my study there are times the Lord will deal with me about something and he'll say go get the communion and let's settle this are y'all here and me in my little office I'll I'll get my cup and my bread and I'll open the word of God and I'll say God I agree this is settled today in the name of Jesus are you listening to me this thing is real I've seen it work since 2011 I've seen miracle after miracle breakthrough after breakthrough I've seen escape from stuff I shouldn't have gotten out of what do you, what do you mean was it that were you no no it wasn't that bad it's that the enemy was trying to do something and God stopped him in his tracks I'm talking to somebody and if you feel like the situation has you locked in, someone has conspired against you. It's about to fall to the ground and come to nothing. Lift the bread. Say, Lord, I thank you for your finished work. And on this Good Friday, I receive the body that was given to me for me the one that took my sin took 
my sickness, took my lack, my poverty, my debt, paid for it in full. I receive that body as my own. Heaven has it recorded that Jesus and I were together through the whole process of death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating. And I boldly confess, in the name of Jesus, my sins are remitted, my body healed, my debt paid in full. And I thank you. It is not by my performance, but it is by your finished work. In the name of Jesus, let's all eat together. Now we're about to move to the other side. I was praying today. I never get a chance to get to this. I never, I never get to it. As many times as I've taught this, I never get to it. I can only say it. Whew. Maybe I need to study it some more. But when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, he says to the Father, let this cup pass from me. And the Spirit of the Lord, He said to me, He said, Son, I and the Father have an agreement over the cup. So that's why He says, This cup is the new. He knew His blood was going to be shed. He knew the cup he had to drink, but he also knew that once that was done, that cup was going to mean something to you. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, he said the Father and the Son have an agreement over the cup. That anyone who drinks this cup, believing a thing is settled, they will bear witness with the fact that it's settled. Are you there? I want you to lift up the cup. I want you to say, Lord, this is the new covenant. I receive it. Every benefit, every attribute, every blessing, every favor of the new covenant is mine. Not because of what I have done, but because of what Jesus has done. And I boldly confess, as he is, so am I in this world. And more and more, I am taking on the image of the heavenly man. My sins are remitted, my body healed, my debt paid. I am increasing more and more in the name of Jesus now listen don't you drink anything yet without settling something if you've got something you need settled I want you to point it out tonight just say it to the Lord God I'm 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 drinking over this I declare this thing over I declare it done what what is it what what is it whatever it is leave it at the table in the name of Jesus now look at your neighbor and tell them that's settled. Look at your other neighbor, Jim. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to put your mind on something else now, cause that's a settled thing. Let's all drink together. And the people said. And the people said. Would you clap your hands and praise the Lord Jesus? Did you receive tonight? Did you receive tonight? I want you to clap your hands and just thank the Lord. Open your mouth and thank Him.
Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Lay your hands on yourself just a minute. There are miracles happening. And between now and Sunday night, some of you are going to see some tremendous breakthroughs. I know this. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me concerning it. And, and on Sunday, we're going to stand before the Lord, many of us, lifting the offering before the Lord. As the Spirit of God has directed us. But tonight I want you to do something real quickly under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. For those of you watching me live streaming, I want you to do something. I want as many of you as can to come into agreement with me tonight about these next three or four days being days of supernatural breakthrough, breakout, and exodus. I want us to come into agreement. Somebody say agreement. Now please hear me. It's not a game, not a gimmick, and there's no magic in the number. But I want every person who can in this room and every person watching me live streaming to get a seed and sow it into this word and into this anointing of 77 zero. When I was in prayer today, that's what the Spirit of the Lord spoke. He said, I want you to have the people sow the impartation seed at this teaching. The Holy Spirit spoke in my spirit years ago. It was when this prophetic mantle came on my life. And he said, there are certain things now I'm going to have you teach by the spirit of revelation. There are things I'm going to give to you and I'm going to have you teach them to my people. He said, there will be times when I will tell you to have them so into the word and into the anointing of God. Not a game, not a gimmick. And he spoke to me out of Numbers 11, where God tells Moses, the prophet, he said, get 70 of the elders of Israel and have them stand with you. And he says, and I will take of the spirit that is on you and put the same on them. The Bible says when that happened, the spirit of prophecy came on them. It's an interesting story. You should read it when you get a chance. Because the Bible says Moses called 70 people and only 68 came. But when the impartation was released, the two that didn't come started prophesying at their houses. Even though they weren't in the tabernacle because of the agreement that God had set on the prophetic word. There is an impartation, and the Lord said this to me, that you'll teach certain things and I will impart the same spirit and anointing that's on you, on people in that area, and the Holy Spirit will take them further into truth in the area of the thing that you teach. I've said this many times before, but it bears repeating in this moment. Jesus taught in Mark 4 that when the word is taught, the enemy comes immediately to steal it. And that's why a lot of people, they hear the word, but they never actually act on it. Paul teaches in the book of Galatians that when the spirit of God ministers to you, you're to sow to the spirit. And he says, when you sow to the spirit, not the man, not the ministry, to the spirit because the holy ghost is the one who taught you he said when you sow to the spirit you will of the spirit reap eternal life that doesn't mean salvation you can't pay for salvation what he's saying there is the life that is in the word that's been taught to you will become unstoppable it will start to take on momentum in your life and you'll continue to increase the lord taught me many years ago this is one of the ways you protect the word that's sown into your heart. Satan can't steal it when you sow to the spirit and you receive it. Do you understand what I just said? And you say, prophet of God, I don't have that to give. Well, then give the very best you can. The Bible says that there first be a willing heart. It is accepted not according to what a man has not, but according to what he has. No compulsion, 
no coercion. If you don't want to give anything, don't. Freely I have received and freely I give. But to those of you who know the principle, I want you to sow into this anointing right now. If you're watching me live streaming right there on your computer screen, right there on your smartphone, there's a donate button. There's a way for you to sow. Just click it and sow. Or you can text CEMM to 41444. Follow the prompts. That's CEMM to 41444. You can call the number on the screen, 310-323-2600. I just imparted significant truth. Some of you have been moved. You need the prayer of agreement. You need someone to pray with you. Maybe something you heard was awakened in you and you need someone to agree with you. I've got trained prayer ministers ready to agree with you. I know it's early in the morning on the East Coast. Some of you are watching, but we're here to pray for you. 310-323-2600. Call the number. And if you desire, sow a seed. Mix your faith and your giving, but do it now. 310-323-2600. If you've got the Bishop of app, you can give that way. If you're here, if you're giving cash, use the envelope, please. The ushers will give you one if you raise your hand, if you want to give cash, if you want to do it by bank or credit card. There's someone in the aisle that will assist you real quickly. If you're making out a check, make it payable to C-E-M-M. -M. Now don't take away from your heave offering to do this. So if you're holding it, just, just wait. Amen. But if you are impressed of the Spirit of God to sow, do it right now. I'm going to sow mine, and I want you to sow yours. Amen. Hallelujah. Here's mine. It's more than 70, but put it in there. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Raise your envelope up. Raise your hands up. If you're sewing, if you're sewing, raise it up. If you're watching me live streaming, just lift your hand right there where you are. Say these words after me. Say, Lord, I sow into the word, into the anointing, recognizing the Holy Spirit taught me tonight and I declare this word this truth shall continue to produce in my life unstoppable it will be and I will be as I work with it in the name of Jesus now say this out loud I confess in favor in finance in things being added to me there is a harvest coming back to me. And in Jesus' name, I have enough and something left over. Amen and amen. Give as the Lord has prospered you and as he has blessed you. And let's prepare to make our way out of here. As one man said, you don't have to go home. But you gotta leave here. Come on, worship the Lord with us just a minute. Worship the Lord with us just a moment as we give. Come on, sing it. I receive it. Give it bless me. Say, bless me. Bless me. Oh God. Bless me. Oh Lord. Bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Bless me. I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive the increase of the Lord. Come on, say it. Bless, bless, bless me. Bless me. Come we on, stand receive your people on our way home. Bless me indeed. In the Lord, my territory. My territory. Oh, Lord.
lift your hands. Don't forget Resurrection Sunday service, 1130. This Sunday, the power of God will be in manifestation. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we leave this place, we do not leave your presence. Angels of God, go with the people. See them safely home. Keep them in peace and victory. And as we leave, we boldly declare that the angels of the Lord encamp round about us. And they deliver us because we are those that fear the Lord. And all the people said, the Lord bless you. We'll see you Sunday in Jesus.